Well, welcome in that precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. Join me as I share what I know is a powerful now word that I've had to live out myself in recent days. And it's called, Don't Be Afraid, Only Believe. And I'm gonna share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. I don't know about you, but it's lately, the enemy has been trying to just, you know, overwhelm me with these negative reports that suggest that I'm about to fail and that it's all over. And I get calls from people going through the same. And so I want to share what the Lord has been speaking to me. And I pray that it really blesses you. In this episode, we're going to, of course, be looking at the story of Jairus and the healing of his daughter. It's a powerful story. I think about the centurion, and we'll look at that as well. In the case of the centurion, the man simply says, say the word. And by saying the word, even though the servant was a distance away, that word of Jesus was able to travel that distance and instantly heal the servant. We see other cases where Jesus, in simply saying a word, healed the people and delivered them. Yet with Jairus, it was different. With Jairus, knowing the future, knowing that they would do a journey, and along the journey, they'd be stopped by a woman, a woman with an issue of blood, who would get healed. And that delay would cause the daughter to die. Yet Jesus goes off on this journey with Jairus. Even though he could have instantly healed the girl, it was because this journey was so important. Many of us would love the instant, and I'm grateful for the times where I prayed and I've got the instant result. But I found the majority of the times, there is a journey that God wants us to walk through. And that journey is all about the heart. It's all about where we are exposed and the issues that can so hinder and sometimes even stop the blessing of God are brought forward so that we might address them with His help. I pray that this message really is a timely word and would bless you. So let's press in by praying and let's get a hold of everything He has for us today. Father, we come in that name, the name of Jesus. We want to lift Him up. I thank you, Father, there's no distance in the Spirit. And I thank you for your presence. Jesus, would you just come into the room? even right now. Holy Spirit, would you breathe in us, move as you see free, fit, and would you come and give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Come and glorify Jesus. Let Jesus be lifted up. Let each person be so ministered to by your Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for such a now word, a right word, so that faith would arise, and Father, we would be overcomers in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you that you have a purpose and a place and a future for each person listening and watching. And let us receive it and get a hold of it by faith and press in, Father, in these last days that Jesus might be glorified in everything we say, do, and think. I thank you, Father, in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. And we break off of each person fear. We break off every attack of the enemy to so get this place where you get confused, consumed in fear, overwhelmed with dread. We break it off of you in the name of Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Holy Spirit, just so move and bring us to that place where we stand in the liberty that Jesus provided for us through the blood. I want to start by reading 1 John 3.8. We know that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son as a demonstration that each one of us would recognize and realize He so loves you. Jesus came because He loved you, because the Father loves you. And the purpose in 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that He might destroy the works of the devil. He might destroy completely. And on the cross, he gained an utter victory over 
everything of the enemy. Oh, that we would get a vision of how big our Jesus is. Because unfortunately for many of us, we have a vision of a small Jesus and big problem. And that problem becomes such an authority in our lives. And what becomes the authority dictates to us what we do, what we say, and what we think. That authority will come and either bind us or loose us. If it's the case of Jesus, he will loose you. But if it's of the enemy, he will hold you bound in fear, held captive, unable to move, paralyzed. And maybe you're in that place. Oh, today, that you'll be set free. That spirit of paralysis be removed from you. The captivation of the enemy broken from you. And that the peace of the Lord our God would so consume you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, even now, in the name of Jesus. In John 17, you see in verse 8, Jesus said that he manifested the name, the name of the Father. Now, if I was to go to Exodus chapter 3, Moses asks the Lord as he is at a counter with you know, the burning bush, and the Lord sends him back. He said, who shall I say has sent me? And he said, I am. That name, I am. The unspeakable name. The name of the Father is a declaration that he is absolute authority. And we must lay a hold of this. That he walks with absolute authority. And I say this because to lay hold of faith, we're going to have to understand authority. Because if I was to take you to the account of the centurion, Jesus ties authority with faith. Now, if I go to Mark 5, verse 21, we're talking now about Jairus, who was a synagogue official. Underline that. He's heard about Jesus, and Jesus comes to his town. And he has this desperate situation where his daughter is dying. Are you desperate? Are you in that place where you've got to get a hold of Jesus? If you don't, you're going under. It says in 5, Mark 5, verse 21, And he begged him earnestly, saying, My daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed, and she will live. Smith Wigglesworth would say this, Be not afraid, only believe. This is one of those marvelous truths of the Scripture that is written for our help, that we may believe as we see the almightiness of God and also our privilege, not only to enter in by faith, but to become partakers of the blessings He wants to give us. I believe that He has so much He desires to bless us with. If we look along the way, he meets the woman with the issue of blood. And he doesn't just heal her, but makes her whole. You have to look at her story to recognize and realize that she's gone 12 years suffering at the hands of the physicians and is no better. The issue of blood meant that she could not go in public. So it impacted her in so many ways, financially, socially, mentally, emotionally, and of course, physically. But Jesus ran, and he didn't just say, be healed, he said, be made whole. And you will find that Jesus always wants to do more. He wants to bring you to a place where not are you just healed or the need met, but you're made whole, that he might take of you and make you a living epistle, demonstrating the victory of the cross, demonstrating that we have a real Jesus, with real answers to real problems. It seems when you stand and you've gone through the fire, when you've come to the place where if you didn't get a hold of Jesus, you would have failed. You have got a testimony. You've got something that challenges the norm. And for all who are hungry, all who are thirsty, it becomes a word of comfort. It becomes a now word for them. And God wants to make of you such a vessel that He can glorify His name through. 
Smith went on to say, my message is on the lines of faith. Because some do not hear in faith, it profits them nothing. There is a hearing of faith and a hearing which means nothing more than listening to words. I beseech you to see to it that everything done may bring not only the blessing to you, but strength and character, and that you may be able to see the goodness of, the, of God in this meeting. That you might see how much more God wants to do, how great He is, because Jesus came and manifested the name, the absolute authority of the name, but the tender heartedness, the abundance of love and mercy, how good our God is, and how He came to destroy the works of the enemy because of His great mercy. He didn't just come to just simply get us out, but to give us a complete and utter victory, to give us an exceedingly great triumph over our enemy. He's not trying to get you where you hang on by your nails, suffer through it, but where you are so blessed and lifted that no matter what you're going through, you always walk in victory. You're always kept in His perfect peace so that that storm stops. Now, if we look uh, at the story, I'm going to get the hold of this. Let me skip ahead here. Smith went on to say, I want to impress upon you the importance of believing in this, what the Scripture says. I may have many things to relate about people who dared to believe God until it came to pass. This is a wondrous word. In fact, all of the Word of God is wonderful. It is an everlasting word, a word of power, a word of health, a word of substance, a word of life. It gives life into the very nature to everyone that lays a hold of it. If he believes it is a need, uh, in, in the time of need, it will bring the blessing. And I want you to see that it's the hearing by faith. You know, many of us, we hear these great messages and we believe in them, but it is simply a mental agreement. It has never penetrated and impacted because it's in the day of trial. It's in the day of great difficulty where what we really believe is exposed. What is absolute authority in our life is demonstrated. Do we absolutely believe in Him? Or do we believe more in what we see and what we feel? You cannot underestimate the importance of daily taking time into the secret place and knowing Him. And there hearing His Word so the Spirit of God gives you ears to hear, eyes to see, and a hearing heart. So that the Word is able to go deeper. That you can become more conscious of His presence, more aware of how great He is. And day after day, Jesus becomes bigger in you. In Proverbs 21 verse 31 it says this, The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance or victory is of the Lord. There is a responsibility that we have to daily seek His face. We're told you have not because you ask not. I look at many of the healings, and you'll see people come like they're blind. And Jesus would say to them, what do you want me to do? Now, it seems pretty obvious, but there's something about asking, because it comes down to authority. I told you about the centurion. Now, the centurion, um, which is in Matthew, I believe, chapter um, 8. In there, we see this man whose servant is paralyzed in suffering badly. He comes in desperation and asks Jesus to heal him. And Jesus says, okay, I'm coming. But the centurion says, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. He says, but listen, I am like you, a man under authority. I have authority because I'm under authority. And that, that demonstration, the proof of the authority is that he said, I would say to this one, go and he goes, this one come and he comes. So there's a couple things we need to get hold of. One, you have authority because you're under authority for a purpose. Jesus walked with the authority of the Father for the purpose of you and I and delivering us from the works of the enemy. 
That same authority He gave to us in His name. Think about that. Now, secondly, authority is conveyed and released through words. We know in the Proverbs it says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Your words have such authority, if you understand it, because with your words, you can bind, you can loose. With your words, you can say yes and you can say no. With your words, you can choose life or death. With your words. Because your words will first bring you to the place of submitting to His authority, so that you come under His authority, and therefore now in your life, you walk with His authority. And if I walk with His authority, it is now His job to enforce it. He brings the victory. So I do my job of submitting. And if there's anything in my life not in compliance with His will, with His authority, then this journey that Jairus would now take would expose the heart, and He exposes our hearts, so that anything not in compliance, anything hindering, anything that's stopping is exposed that we might bring it into the obedience of Christ. In that place, you can walk with an authority. You've been given sovereign right over this body. You've been given legal authority in many areas by the Lord that now, as you stand before Him, you're able with your words to say, John 14, if you ask anything in my name, that will I do. John 15, he adds a little more clarity. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you want. So if you are in compliance, walking where he is the absolute authority, he is the great I am, the almighty God, then you can ask, Sadly, many of us, when we are being bombarded by the enemy with a bad report, and the enemy brings, of course, facts. He brings things you can touch. He brings to you reports from, you know, authorities, like doctors and such like. And those voices and those facts speak so loud into our lives that they can so cause fear to arise. We become paralyzed. We become consumed with this fear and a dread that comes with it. The Lord wants to set you free from that and give you the report of heaven so that you don't walk and say, I am but a grasshopper in the sight of all these facts, in the sight of all these things I am not able to overcome. And the truth is you can't. You need Him. But He is the one who will give you the victory. Now let me continue. Smith said, and Smith would suffer several things in his life and overcome them, including appendicitis. Now, when he got appendicitis, it didn't look good. He is diagnosed simply too late. And at that time, they basically said, they put him to bed, that he would most likely die during the night. They've given up. Yet, they would pray, like many of us, and they prayed and prayed through but they never got the victory because they didn't come to the place where they got a revelation that he was the healer and they didn't come under the authority of him as the healer. They saw the sickness as a disease and we accepted it as the will of the Lord. Instead of making a stand, the enemy wants to persuade you with this bad report that it is God's will. Yet God has given you many prophetic words, many things. He's told you you have a purpose in place. And I believe that God wants to do so many great things through us in this hour that this generation might see a demonstration of power if we will choose the good report. Smith said, But one night, 30 years ago, I was carried home helpless. We knew very little about divine healing, but we prayed through. It is 30 years and more since God healed me. I am 68 years old and fresher, in better health, and more fit for the work that I was at that time. 
It was the most wonderful experience when the life of God becomes the life of men. The divine power that sweeps through the organism, cleansing the blood, making the man fresh every day. The life of God is resurrection power. And what Smith got a hold of, it was this place where we walk really in the secret place, in such an abiding relationship where every day that life has been poured into us and where we're being lifted, where we're being changed. Because we should be taken home when the Lord tells it and calls it, not by sickness or disease. We should not have these things that the enemy is trying to steal from us, destroy us, overwhelming us. But rather we should walk in the victory, in the perfect plan of the Lord. And we have got to walk in that secret place and there be so secure in Him that we know no matter what we face, we are always overcomers. That we always gain a far surpassing victory. And that bad report is like water off a duck's back. It has no right. It has no place in our lives. The only report that we receive is the report of heaven. The only report that we're interested in is what the Master has to say. Now, continuing on here, Smith explained, the doctor gives the bad report and the doctor leaves. But aren't you grateful to have praying people that you know? who know how to get a hold of heaven, who know how to press in and walk under the authority of the Lord Jesus so that in their prayer life there is an authority that is effective and produces. Smith explained, when he, talked about the doctor, was nicely out of the house, an old lady and a young man who knew how to pray came in. The young man put his knees on the bed and said, Come out in the name of Jesus. And it was gone. We had no time for argument and instantly I was free. Oh, hallelujah. I was as free as I am now. I never believed that any person ought to be in bed in the daytime. And I jumped up and went downstairs. And in fact, he would go straight to work. The doctor would stop by. And the doctor hears, and the doctor said he ain't coming home alive. Well, Smith Wigglesworth went on to live into his 80s. He lived a good, healthy life because God completely delivered him. And God wants to do such miraculous things in you that you share from a personal revelation. You walk in a personal understanding. I want to so encourage you. The other day, somebody was sharing something with me. And they said, the pastor said. Now, what the pastor said was right. But afterwards, the Lord said to me, next time, say, why do you believe that? And I said, Lord, why would, why would I ask that? And he said, because so many of my people walk building their lives on the revelation somebody else got. It may be good. It may be true. But in the day of battle, it won't help you. It won't give you the strength in the inner man. Because the enemy will come in. He will bring other reports. I get attacked all the time with people that share, well, this person on YouTube says this, and so you're wrong. And we don't get into the Word and find out what the Word says. So that the Word is absolute authority. Not somebody's opinion of it. And I'm grateful for the gifts, the fivefold, and that we're to learn from the wise. Good thing. But that does not exclude our responsibility to get into the Word and find out for ourselves. Because as you do, you will find you're sowing yourself to that Word and to His authority, and it will cause faith to rise. You'll have a security and you'll be able to defend the hope that's in you, especially in the day of trial. Now, continuing on here, Smith Wigglesworth would go to a, a meeting, a conference, and he was ministering for quite some time. One of the nights, one of the other leaders comes to him and said, are you going to the meeting tonight? And Smith said, no. 
No. And I want you to listen to what he said to him. He said, Paul the Apostle let, left the people to do the work and passed on to another place. I have been here long enough now. You go do the work. And we'll stop there. What he was saying, and we've got to get this, we often want somebody else. And I'm grateful for those vessels that have been able to carry me because there's times we need carried. There was a time that David ran to the battle and defeated Goliath. Then there was another giant where somebody else had to run for him. I'm grateful for the praying partners and to have people that at any point, at any time, worldwide, God can call on and have pray for me. And I look at the impact of the ministry. We need prayer partners. But that never excludes my responsibility to seek His face and to pray and to do what I am called to do because authority is fully given when we begin to do what we're supposed to do. When you step out and do what He would have you do now, you will find that authority is released in your life. We're saying, give it to me first and then I'll go. God says, go and I'll give it to you. He will back it. He will confirm it. Preach the word and He confirms it. Preach the word in your own life. Many people want to go out there and preach out there. But the first person you need to preach to is yourself, to your circumstances, to your situation. And when you preach to yourself, you will find that word spoken over your life. It is confirmed. So now as you walk it out, when you come to places, you have something real to give. You have a real victory to share. Now, he continued. When he came back, he said, talking about this man who went to the meeting, okay, without Smith. He said, we had a wonderful time. Smith said, what happened? He said, I invited them all out, took off my coat, rolled, off my, or rolled up my sleeves, and prayed, and they were all healed. I did just like you did. Jesus said, I give unto you power over all the enemy. And there's an expectation from heaven that as he shows us that we will begin to step out and do. As you learn from him in the secret place, that you will begin to act it in your life. It's he who hears the word by faith, receives it, and then does it, applies it to their life. So as you take the time in that secret place, and he shares with you the word, and he'll always share with you the right word, the now word, take it, eat of it, and do it, apply it. Now, going back to Smith Wiggles, or going back, sorry, to the Jairus, as I said to you, Jairus has taken on a journey, and his heart would be exposed. And I want you to think about this. There's several things. Number one, he had to learn was patience, because we have to learn the timings of the Lord. Most of us, when we pray, we start with our prayer list. The thing that's consuming us is I need this need. I need this fixed. And the truth is, you need Him first. We've got to get our eyes off of the thing and recognize we need Him first. If everything failed, you need this. And so when we seek His kingdom first and we learn how to flow with Him, walk with Him, there will come a point where He will tell you, now it's time to ask. And I've found in my own prayer life that I've stepped back from just immediately entering in with the need. And I spend more time on the fellowship, on the worship, on the lifting Him up, so that he's bigger in me and he's greater, stronger, the stronger strong man than what I face. And as I develop this and I start to walk in agreement with him, there comes this moment where in my spirit I know, ask. He so touches my spirit and tells me, ask. 
And I'm able to ask by the leading of the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, knowing He hears me, and when you're in that place, you are fully persuaded that it is coming. You won't dare ask anything outside of what He's told you to ask. And you know that at that moment He told you to say to this mountain, move, it would move. But you stay to what He's told, because there's an honor. There's a walking under authority that I want to walk in absolute obedience to see the perfect results. There's a holy desperation. And that holy desperation starts by me seeking Him, not seeking the need met. I seek Him. So Jairus had to recognize he needed Jesus. He needed Jesus first and foremost. And he had to walk in the timing of Jesus patiently, keeping his eyes on Jesus, not on the situation. Because along the journey, they would meet the woman with the issue of blood. And that delay, of course, would cost the daughter. He was the, um, the synagogue official. He had the right to kick the lady out, but he didn't. Because his heart was being tested. And remember, faith worketh by love. And you will find heart issues are addressed to ensure that there's no unforgiveness, there is no lack of love, there's no bitterness. You will find that in that season right before the breakthrough, where you're standing in faith, all hell breaks loose. And in all hell breaking loose, it is a desperate attempt that enemy will stop you, but it is also a test to show what's on the heart. And if you will abide in the secret place, he will show you how to overcome. Smith said, talking about Jairus and the daughter, God brings a remarkable, glorious fact to our minds tonight. The healing of this little helpless girl. The physicians failed. The mother said to the father, there's only one hope if you can see Jesus. The mother said, sorry, if you, as sure as you can meet Jesus, our daughter will live. And you can imagine that family, the desperation is to see their daughter dying. We, what are we going to do? We've heard of Jesus. If you, can, if you can get Jesus, if you can just get a hold of him and bring him here, I know she will be well. And many of us will say that, but we don't really mean it, because if you really mean it, you will linger as long as it takes until you get Jesus. You'll be like the woman with the issue of blood. Nothing's stopping me. If it takes an hour, I'm waiting an hour. Because Jesus, I've got to meet with you. Your word says, if I draw near to you, you draw near to me. So I'm not quitting. I've got to have the answer. There's too much at stake. Now, if I continue. Smith said, do you think it's possible for anybody anywhere to go looking for Jesus without seeing him? Is it possible to think about Jesus without Jesus drawing near? No. This man knew there was power in the name of Jesus. In my name they shall cast out devils. But we must be sure we know the name. For in Acts 19, the seven sons of Sceva said to the man possessed with the devil, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached to come out. The evil spirit said, I know Paul and I know Jesus, but who are you? And many of us walk in that place where we're sharing and standing, as I said, in somebody else's revelation. You've got to be in the place where you know that you know. That place where the Master has spoken His Word into your heart. And you are fully assured, fully persuaded, unmovable. And no matter what speaks or challenges you, the Master said, It is written, no debating. I am secure. I am set. Smith went on to say, But Jesus said, Be not afraid, only believe. Which is Mark 5, verse 36. He speaks the word just in time. Jesus is never behind time. When the tumult is the worst, the pain most severe, the cancer gripping the body, then the word comes, only believe. 
when everything seems as though it will fail and it is practically hopeless, the Word of God comes to us, only believe. In that midst of the storm, in that place where there's so much of that bad report overwhelming, flooding you, there is such a rage on the inside of you, there's just so much confusion. You need then to get into the secret place and wait until the Master speaks. The Master, delayed by the woman with the issue of blood, as she shares the testimony, becomes aware that the synagogue official has these people bring in the bad report, and he stops right in the middle and says, do not be afraid, only believe. If I read to you James chapter 1, you would see the warning that you cannot walk in a place of being double-minded, doubting and believing. And that was the other thing that God would work on this man, was to remove from him those things of unbelief that would hinder God moving. When it came to the place where there was nothing Jairus could do, he had to only trust Jesus. Because if Jesus didn't do it, he was going under. He was failing. And that's a place where we have to cling. That's a place where most people quit. But I want to so provoke you to cling, to press in, to get stronger in him, to seek his face and just spend time with him. Allow him to speak into your life, even right now. Only believe. Don't be afraid. Allow all that fear to break and fall and crumble, even right now in the name of Jesus. If you're walking filled with fear, in the name of Jesus, we come against that fear and we command it to fall and to leave you in Jesus' name. We declare his peace. It was blood-bought. It was provided by Jesus. It is his peace. It's a peace the world cannot give. It's a peace the world can understand. Let it consume you even right now, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. A peace that the world looks and thinks you're a fool, but you are secure in him in the secret place of his presence, kept in the day of trouble, kept from the words of men, from the attacks of the enemy, kept in that secret place. Let him breathe on you. Let him so speak over your life. Let him surround you with songs of deliverance. Oh, you need them. Don't go to sleep until you have prayed and entered in, so that all night he might sing over you, over your spirit, songs of deliverance. Wake up. This is the day of salvation. Putting your eyes on him, giving him first place, always seeking first him, honoring him. And then by faith, daring to ask, recognizing who you are because there's such an authority. You're a son and a daughter. You are a son and a daughter, a king and a priest. You have a right to ask that you're to come by boldness, by way of the blood, with such a confidence to ask and an expectancy to receive because he's faithful. He is the almighty God. Oh, that you get such a revelation. He is the beginning and the end. Not this problem. He is. He is the author and the perfecter of your faith. He will teach you in the way to go with His eyes upon you. His Holy Spirit is with you, in you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. In the midst of this trial, He is so there to strengthen you on the inner man, to fill you with joy in the midst of the battle that you might have strength, knowing the victory is yours. Let me finish with this. Smith said, this is a wonderful word that God wants you to hear. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The believer may fall asleep, but the believer doesn't die. Oh, that people would understand the deep things of God. It would change the whole situation. It makes you look out with a glorious hope to the day when the Lord shall come. Oh, the remarkableness of our Lord Jesus. I want to impress upon you the importance of realizing that He is in the midst. 
No person need to be without the knowledge that they are not only saved, but God can live in these bodies. He is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He is with you. And if you will come into the secret place of His presence and there abide in His Word, it will be so open to you, so rich, you will be able to come to the well and drink and be refreshed. You will be able to come and so receive that there is an overflow. That when the enemy comes in with his flood of the bad report, something comes forth from you with an overflow, with a greater authority that says to the devil, no, not this day, not this time. And says, I say yes to heaven. I choose life. I choose blessing. I choose you, Jesus. I choose your will. I choose your way. I lift you up. I worship you. Jesus, I enthrone you. I give you the glory. I give you the power. I give you the praise. Holy Spirit, come. You are so welcome. You are so received. Let your presence fill this place. Father, there's no distance. We just thank you, Jude. Just fill each person. Refresh each person. Come, Holy Spirit, and so move. Come and so open eyes to see, ears to hear. Let your peace invade and fill. Let the climate change. I thank you, Father, for just a divine assault to so fill the place with your magnificent, wonderful presence. Jesus, come into the room. We so receive you. We so welcome you. You are the Lord, our healer, the Lord, our provider, the Lord, our righteousness. Through you, we overcome. Jesus, you are Lord, and we bless you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you are good and you are a great Father. We honor you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, have such a way in our hearts. We just lay it on the altar. Father, we thank you that this message would so glorify you. Jesus, that you would be lifted up. Father, my heart's desire is that Jesus is so lifted up that each life is touched, blessed, strengthened, and encouraged. I thank you, Father, you watch over your word to perform it. Father, right now, confirm your word through mighty power that the world may see and know that Jesus, you are Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We honor and we thank you in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. And I thank you for watching. And I just pray that if this message has blessed you, ministered to you, in the name of Jesus, would you please like, share, subscribe, and add your comments. Because as you do, you really help us with the algorithms with YouTube and Google to reach more people in this, the final days. We want to make such a statement for Jesus. We want to see lives truly touched and changed. Believers knowing who they are and living boldly, walking in the victory. I believe it's the last hour. And I believe that he wants to do something so glorious to demonstrate his mighty power that this generation might know. And you and I are here by purpose. Let us not bow to the report of the enemy, but dare to stand up and dare to believe and dare God that we might be used of him mightily, that Jesus may be worshiped, that we would lift him up and not the sickness, disease, the lack, but let Jesus be lifted up. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, and I just want to bless you. I want to encourage you. You know, if you want to get the notes of any of these messages, uh, find out more information, you want to become a prayer partner, you want to become a financial partner, just go to the website, to robertpairs.org, and you can learn so much more. If you don't have a church right now, and you need a church just to get a good word, a right word, while you're looking, consider joining us online. For more information, go to robertpairs.org, go to the About page, and you can sign up. I bless you. I so want you to know that we're praying for you. And I remind you as always, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because through and for Him, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you.